In this question, we're asked to differentiate each of the following with respect to x, simplifying your answer wherever possible. So part a, differentiating 5x cubed minus x all to the power of 10. So this is an example of a function inside a function. So we have use of the chain rule to answer this question. So the inside function is 5x cubed minus x the, to the power of 10 is the outside function. So let's start by differentiating the outside function and bring the power of 10 down. The function inside the bracket remains untouched, decrease the power by 1, and I've now differentiated the outside function. I then need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So this is then multiplied by, and actually, since it's going to be, the result is going to be in a bracket, I'm just going to write it straight away as a product. So differentiating the inside function, I get 15x squared minus 1. And there is nothing further that can be done on that question. Part B wants us to differentiate sine to the minus 1 of x cubed. So what you have to remember in this question is the inverse trigonometric function. We're not trying to prove how this is differentiated here. If you look in your formula booklet, if y equals sine to the minus 1 of x, then dy by dx is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we're going to use this now with a chain rule, use assuming that x is in fact x cubed. So actually, if I put this in brackets as an aside, and just note that this is in the formula booklet. So dy by dx, I'm going to differentiate the outside function. So what we get for differentiating sine to the minus 1x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x cubed. So I'm replacing x squared with x cubed, so I get x cubed squared. This is then multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is 3x squared. And so if I just simplify this to get a nice, neat answer, dy by dx is 3x squared over the square root of 1 minus x to the power of 6. And just be careful, make sure you multiply those indices, don't add them. Okay, let's go on to part C. Part C have, has got a product of two functions. So I'm going to take, this is going to require the product rule, so I'm going to take u to be equal to x to the power of 4, which when I differentiate du by dx is given as 4x cubed. And then v in that case is log of 2x. Notice that I've got function 2x inside a function natural log, so I'm going to need to use a chain rule. So dv by dx, in differentiating natural log of 2x gives me 1 over 2x. Then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of 2x, which is 2, so I'll get 2x over 2 over 2x which I can simplify to 1 over x. So now using the product rule, dy by dx is v du by dx. Plan ahead before you write this out. Think about what's the nice, neat way to write this. 4x cubed as a coefficient of the natural log is a much neater way to write this. So I'm going to write this as 4x cubed ln 2x. And then cross multiplying the other way round. I get x to the power of 4 times 1 over x, which if you want you can do in one step. So you've got x to the power of 4 divided by 1 over x just leaves you x cubed. Okay, so let's have a look at, so that was part C. Part D, part D as you can see we've got a fraction and there's a function of x both top and bottom. So we're going to use the quotient rule on this question. So let's identify first of all that u is e to the 4x. Now differentiating u is going to again require the chain rule because 4x is a function inside the function of the exponential. So differentiating e to the 4x gives me e to the 4x and then times and multiplying by the derivative of that inside function means I get 4e to the 4x. Identifying v as 2x plus 3 to the power of 6 
dv by dx is equal to multiply by the power. So I get 6 times 2x plus 3 and decrease the power. So that's the outside function differentiated. Now multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is just 2. So it's 2 times 6. Lots of 2x plus 3 to the power of 5. And of course, we can simplify that then to read just 12. Okay, so now using the quotient rule, remember that the quotient rule is in the formula booklet. So dy by dx is equal to v du. So again, du is a be much better coefficient in this scenario. So I get 4e to the 4x multiplied by 2x plus 3 to the power of 6 minus u dv. Think about how you're going to tidy this up. So I'm going to put the 12 in constant as our very first part of that term, followed by the e to the 4x. And just a little bit of forward planning means you can save a little bit of time tidying up as you work through. So I get 12e to the 4x times 2x to the power of 3, uh, sorry, 2x plus 3 to the power of 5. And then this is all over. Uh, 2x to the power of uh, 2x plus 3 to the power of 6 squared. Okay, so I'm going to do some tidying up now, see if I can factorize and simplify this this derivative. Notice that I've got a common factor of 4. So I'm going to take the 4 out. I actually have a common factor of e to the 4x as well. So I can take that out as a common factor. I then have a common factor of 2x plus 3 to the power of 5. And then what I get left inside the bracket is the 4e to the 4x comes out. So dividing this term, I just get left with 2x plus 3 for the first term. Minus, if I divide the second term by the 2x plus 3, it cancels. All I get left with is 3. So this is then all divided by 2x plus 3 to the power of 12. Now, having factorized, I can cancel factors top and bottom. There is a common factor of 2x plus 3 to the power of 5 top and bottom that I can cancel through. So I'm going to just cancel them top and bottom. If I look at my bracket here, I'm going to get 2x Actually, let's deal with that now so I remember that that's done. So I'm going to have underneath 2x plus 3 to the power of 7. So now 2x plus 3 minus 3 gives me 2x. So if I multiply this whole term and all that's left is 4e to the power of 4x times 2x, I'm going to get 8xe to the 4x. Okay then, so let's have a look and see how the marks are awarded on this question. So in part A, there is a method mark if you've correctly differentiated the outside function and then an answer mark if you've then also multiplied by the correct derivative of the inside function. In part B, you get a method mark if you have correctly uh, used the derivative of sine to the minus 1 of x, so differentiated that outside function, and an answer mark if you've then multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. And in fact, in the mark scheme, where that mark is given is at the point that it's just simplified and tidied up like so. Okay, so part C. Part C is given, gives you a method mark if you have got correct the fact that the uh, leading term here is going to be log 2x times some function, and if you get 4x cubed, so if so really at this point I should have shown x to the power of 4 to get met times 1 over x cubed. But then if you've got both terms correct, you get the method mark and the answer mark. And I've shown my work in here, so this is why I can still get that method mark and answer mark. In part D, there is a method mark if you've got the 2x plus 3 to the power of 6 times some function and 2x, uh, sorry, 12e 
at the 12 2x plus 5 powers of uh, times some sort of function. And there is an answer mark if you've got the full statement correct. There is then, if you've worked through and simplified, there is an answer mark if you've got the correct numerator, and there is an answer mark if you've got the correct denominator. Okay, well I hope you were able to follow my solution and that you understood how to mark your question.